Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking it. It means a lot that you guys keep clicking. If you guys keep clicking, I'll keep making. And after a pack premiere episode, there's definitely a lot of people who I can see as contenders on this season. As we saw, this cast is definitely strategically more savvy than the 41 cast. And with this high level of gameplay, of course, will create a more competitive environment. But with any game, no, no, no matter how competitive, there's always people who just aren't all there. People who simply have no shot at winning the game. Whether it be their fault or not, we see it every single season. And today, I will be talking about the, the examples of this from the 42 cast. Tomorrow, I'll, I'll be talking everyone else who didn't get addressed in this video. I'll shape off a, a, a few of the non-contenders and rank them based on their chances in the game in the first installment of, of my weekly True Contenders series re returning from last season's pre-merge. And before I start, I know there's there's some dudes in, in their mom's basements w w with a comment typed up that says, Dude, it's too early to say it. someone has no chance. You need to wait 3.7 episodes episodes like my idol Peridium, but before you can have an opinion or else I'm going to attack you in the comments like a little bitch. And to that I say, have you ever seen a blade of grass? Like literally go outside, bro. Like literally nobody cares, bro. Okay, first let's t talk about Tori. So you guys know that I love Tori. She even knew who I was when I reached out to her on social media, which I must say did boost my ego so much. But if we're talking realistically, I can see Tori's game going one of two ways. One, she's the center of attention for the whole pre-merge and dodges near death several times, finally being taken out I, I, either late in, in the pre-merge or right at the merge with her enemies fi like f finally you know getting their way and finally outsmarting her. Think like Ace from Gabon or Tracy from Mi Micronesia type of game. Or two, in my personal theory, similar to a Angelina Endeavor's Goliath, which is obviously the ar archetype that she, she was casted to be like, the cast will find her personality to be very childish and over the top, and therefore won't respect her game at the end, and, and she'll be a GOAT and probably a third or second place finisher. Either way, she loses in this scenario, and that's why she ends up here. Still a fantastic casting choice, and also my girlfriend, so, you know, what can I say? All right, next is Jonathan, and there's really not much to say. This guy said pregame that his strategy was to literally win every single challenge. Like, bruh, that's just not going to work. And we haven't had any content from him sh showing that this strategy has changed or that this was just a lie. In a secret scene with Jackson before Jackson got medevac, we, we see Jonathan catch Jackson look looking for an idol. And in instead of taking this awkward situation and using it as an opportunity to make a solid alliance with Jackson, he just goes back to the rest of his tribe, exposing Jackson and losing this opportunity. In fact, I'm going to show it now. So if you don't want to watch it, there's skip um, uh, like two, two minutes later, but I I'm going to show it right now just to show you this is a missed opportunity by Jonathan and it shows that the game he's playing is not really a modern game. This would be the place you'd put it in the immunity hell. So when I was walking around, I see this like tomb looking area and I thought, you know, this would be a really cool place to put an immunity idol. <laughs> so I started looking, I was like, well, there's nobody around. I might as well just start looking around a little bit. See more bamboo? I saw Jonathan coming down the trail and I was like, oh crap. You know as well as I do, this is the area. You know, uh -huh. there has to be one in here. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I didn't want to come off as the person that literally hits the beach and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna go look for firewood. And they're like climbing a tree, looking in holes. You never want to be that person because that puts a huge target on your back. But at the same time, if you're on Survivor, why wouldn't you look for a hidden immunity idol? Jackson just told me he was looking for an idol on the first day. That's the biggest no-no in Survivor. And any attention I can get off of me, the better. Jackson's like looking under rocks. And he like said, man, if any place was gonna, there's gonna be an idol, it yeah. would be right here. I'm not kidding. In this phase, anyone is just trying to find a reason for it to not be them. So if you do something that's just a little bit wrong and someone can say, hey, let's make it that person, that'll put you on the out just like that. I don't trust running into somebody day one looking for an idol. Mm -hmm. no, I'm being honest no, with I, you. I don't run. I make a pact with you guys. Yeah. When Jonathan caught Jackson looking for an idol, it's like, it's just messy. So I have to watch him like a hawk. 
And next is Lydia. It's it's really all her age, and and the fact that her behavior makes her seem like she's already younger th than she is. Like if you just gave me recordings of her talking and said that she was 16 years old, I'd probably believe you. Because when when I saw Xander on on 41, I, I thought he acted more like a 25 year old uh, than a 20 year old. So even though I'd usually rule out anyone t 22 or younger, I, I I still saw him as a c contender in the game. And I feel like your age, although it's very important, is much less important than the age that you behave like. And then example of this on the other side would be cat from blood versus water aka hayden's girlfriend who acts like i'd say probably a 19 year old girl even though in reality she was 24 which i i would usually consider like a fine age when, when talking about contenders or winner picks but because she acted younger it was just as bad as someone who's 16 years old you know uh, and i feel like that that overall is the biggest issue with lydia is she acts all like she's already way way too young but then she acts like you probably a half decade younger than she actually is which is the the real issue with her next is maria and i have to say moms just don't win survivor it's it's the truth uh, aside from tina no mom archetype has ever won the show with all female winners being under the age of 37 again not not including tina uh and i think even if she did you know be you know have a have a younger age and she wasn't a different archetype we've got nothing from her at least nothing of substance from her in the the premiere but then again we also got nothing like completely nothing from tina uh in the pr premiere of season two so who knows maybe but i i personally just going off the archetypes don't really see it happening next is Lindsay, and like i've said in the past i see Lindsay as like a nora 2.0 I, I think that's what cbs wanted her out there for when they casted her uh now after the first episode and and seeing the secret scene fr from from the taku tribe which really doesn't show any really nora like craziness from Lindsay. We'll have to see if I was right, but for stubborn stake, I'm gonna roll with the assumption that she'll eventually turn out to be like Nora. And if this is the case, there's two ways that her game can go. One, like Nora's, where she's laughed at by everyone, not respected, and gets shit on at, at, at Final Tribal. Or two, it, it can go the Abby, Abby Maria route, where everyone just gets so, like so tired of it that they say, screw the game, I just want this this person to go away and go home so I can live a, like a life of peace out on the island. And I don't know, maybe it's a reach, but I just don't see her being some big tr strategical force who is going to have complete control over the game and just dominate. I, I just don't see that being her game, and I really don't know why she's on the cast really to begin with, other than the fact that she's obviously like a really, really strong person and very good at challenges. And lastly, we have Roxroy, who to me lost the game as soon as the first scene that we saw of him came on screen. The army music in the background of, of him bossing his, his entire tribe around, it's just, it's bad. So first of all, it's very rare of the editors to give a winner the Dodo type music, like, like the You Are Stupid music at all, period. But, it, but you know, it's also a winner's ed edit suicide to be shown as the bossy person at all, period. So when you have both of these together, you know, applying to you, your winning chances are basically screwed and are very very bad but then on top of that when you have these two happening at the exact same time together your, your chances now go from bad to impossible and for me that's where Roxway is at right now with his chances at this point being abysmal to win the game based off of his edit and that negative army music in the background of him you know just bossing the whole tribe around and that is everyone guys who do you think has no shot did i miss anyone let me know in the comments and if that's it i'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.